Hey guys, welcome back to Chaos Core Tech. My name is Garrett and today I wanted to talk to you about an interesting piece of software that I found um, for modeling 3D prints. And that software is called Sculptress. It's actually made by Pixelogic, the same company that makes ZBrush, which is a really popular um, modeling tool for video game artists. So basically what Sculptress is, is a really, really simplified 3D sculpting program. So it's like you take a, a ball of clay and then you can start doing the normal things you would do with clay, but on a computer. And now some of you may be wondering how that pertains to 3D printing. And I think it's safe to say that a lot of the creation of 3D models for 3D printing comes from CAD software. Um, for example, Tinkercad is an extremely simplified version of CAD software. So I would sort of liken this to that, but where CAD programs make it really easy to create mechanical things, Sculptress and programs like it make it really easy to create organic looking objects. I'll put a link down in the description, it's free to download. So let's go take a look. Okay, so once you get into Sculptress, this is what you're greeted with. Um, this is a sphere that you will be working with. This is basically your clay. Um, and then how you navigate the scene is um, scroll wheel zooms in and out. Right mouse button does the rotation. And then if you hold shift and middle mouse button, you can pan across the scene. And then left mouse button is dedicated to your brushes. And these are your different brushes over here. And then these are some settings that go along with the brushes. And then you may have noticed that there's a line down the middle of the sphere here, and that is to indicate symmetry. And you can click this little button right over here to remove symmetry, but typically symmetry makes it a lot easier to create models. Okay, now let's talk about these brushes. This is pretty much everything you're gonna be doing in um, Sculptress. So by default, it lands you on draw. Um, and if you use the left mouse button, this is basically what you get. You can just draw on the object which works pretty good. Um, you can pretty much do whatever you want. As you can see, the other side is symmetrical. Um, Control Z works to undo. And if you just keep hammering on one spot, it will eventually get bigger, as you can see right there. But sometimes there's more efficient ways of doing that type of thing. Okay, and then you can also hold the Alt key and click it, and it will do the exact opposite. So instead of drawing out and building material, it, if you hold alt, it'll subtract material away. If you hold shift and left mouse click, it smooths things out. So say that I just wanted these to kind of blend together. Um, I can just hold shift and as you can see, the, the features get a lot softer very quickly. So that is basically the premise of Sculptress. It's designed to be very, very easy. So um, I guarantee if you get in here, um, it'll take you about five minutes to go through these brushes and figure out what they do and you'll already be creating something. So let's just quickly go through some of these other brushes. And then I'm gonna come up to the crease tool and that is just what it sounds like. If you uh, click it, it just puts a really sharp line around the, or where you're clicking. And then obviously you can go over it more for a sharper crease. Um, and you can also do Alt here to build up a line. This is actually good for text, um, just like writing on something. Excuse my uh, horrible handwriting here. But I just signed my model, so that's kind of cool. And then of course you can always come back in and hold Shift and smooth things back out if you don't want them. Or if you just uh, want it to look a little smoother. You know, whatever you want to do there. So that's a good way to get um, really sharp details in there. You'll also notice that the brush size um, scales with the object. So if I come out here, I'll put a huge crease in it. But then if I zoom in really far, it's a tiny little crease. So you can see the difference there. And if you want to change it, um, right up here is your brush size. So you can change that. And then this is the intensity. So if we go really intense and I click, you can see that it puts a huge divot in there or builds out a pretty strong ridge there. So just remember the top one is your brush size and this one is your strength. It says it right over here. Grab is another tool that is actually pretty handy to use. Um, it's a great way of building out material really quickly because instead of just drawing on a little bit like draw does, this one you can actually um, grab whole chunks of it and pull it out. So say that I wanted this front part to be out a little bit more, I can do that and just build on more material and keep doing this until I get the outcome that I want. You can also use shift and scroll wheel to change the uh, 
the brush size, and control scroll, scroll wheel to change the strength on the fly. So what you're really gonna be doing is messing around with these brushes. You'll figure out which ones you like and pretty quickly you'll be able to start um, crafting a model that you will want to print. Okay, so as you can see, with just a little bit of tinkering, um, you can create some pretty unique looking monster type things, um, or really whatever you want to do. So I thought this was pretty cool, the fact that you can just take something like this, start sculpting, and end up with something that actually looks like something. So, so that's all very cool. Um, I'm going to save this. And then you can actually come over here and click export. Now something to keep in mind is this does only export in .obj files. So I'm gonna do drag and thing. So some 3D printing software can handle OBJ files pretty well, others cannot. Um, and say that you wanted to take this and import it into um, Tinkercad or Fusion 360 or something like that, um, you'd need it in an STL file. So I'm gonna show you how to convert that pretty simply. Um, I actually found this really great website. Um, it is just called meshconvert.com and it's got a really nice ad right here do I leak hopefully not but basically you just pick your file okay I've got my dragon thing um, entered right there and then I want it in a binary STL so I'll hit start and it'll do some processing alright then you click the link here to download it and now something to keep in mind is that these are going to be extremely small so you're gonna have to scale them up to be anything that's printable um, and I think that's just because a lot of these um, 3D model creators aren't designed necessarily for 3D printing and so they don't really have a concrete unit of measurement. So um, let's head over to Tinkercad for example. Okay so here I am in my test file for Tinkercad and I have my dragonthing.stl over here um, and for scale I'm actually going to go a thousand percent. So let's give this a try and import. Okay, so now it's loaded in and you can see that even at a thousand percent scale, it is still pretty small. So I'm still gonna scale it up from there even. You can see quite a few little um, like imperfections in here. And I think part of that is due to Sculptrist and part of it is due to Tinkercad, just not handling meshes like this very well. Um, but you can always run these through like Mesh Mixer or NetFab to clean up those types of defects. But now I can just do normal things um, in Tinkercad with it. So if for some reason I wanted a dragon head on this little cube, boom, right there, and I could group them. And a more likely scenario is that you're just bringing the model into Tinkercad to split it up so it's printable. And from here, it's just treated like a normal Tinkercad object. So I thought this was pretty cool. If you guys download this, mess around, and create anything that you think is cool, um, tweet me a picture. I'm at Chaos Cortec. Um, I'd love to see what you guys are making with this stuff. All right, guys. Well, I hope you found this useful. And if nothing else, it'd be fun just to kind of tinker around in there. Now, I did find a couple of other sculpting programs that are actually online that just run in your browser. Um, so I will put a link to those in the description as well. So I will put a link to those as well as the link to Sculptress down below. So check those out. Give them a try. Um, they pretty much do the same thing, but each of them has their own ways of doing that so they're definitely worth checking out all right guys well thanks for joining me if you're wondering what to watch next check the little eye up in the corner 
And then if you thought this video was cool, make sure you give it a thumbs up and get subscribed below if you're not already. I put out new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thanks for joining me, guys. See you next time.